Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming landing of the Tianwen-1 mission by China. The mission that's kind of secretive in a sense that we don't really know much about it. But I wanted to discuss things that we do know and also talk about the main goals of this mission as well, simply because we've talked about the NASA's Perseverance mission, but we haven't really discussed the Chinese mission just as much. So before the lens, let's find out what China is planning here and also find out all of the other details we know so far. Starting with the only video that we have of the mission profile explaining what is going on and what's going to happen. Now the video itself is in Mandarin, but in a nutshell, this is a mission that's going to be using a very similar profile to some of the previous NASA missions, specifically the InSight and the Viking missions, where the lander itself is not really going to be relying on any kind of a sky crane or any kind of a airbag technology like the previous missions from NASA, including Curiosity, Perseverance, or in this case, using um, airbags, this was the Mars Pathfinder missions. Without knowing the details of how the scientists in China were actually deciding this, we can only imagine that they basically went with the safest profile possible. The missions with the most success all used a very similar approach. The approach that started with the Viking probes back in the 1970s. Here is actually an iconic picture of Carl Sagan with one of the Viking landers that in 1970 landed on Mars and was able to do a little bit of science. This is actually when we originally also had this very interesting experiment that might have discovered the life on Mars. Although since then it also created a lot of controversy, mostly because it was a chemical reaction that could have had other explanations. But this is also something that hopefully the Perseverance mission will help us resolve once and for all. The experiments conducted by Perseverance will most likely help us understand what actually happened back then. And so just like the Viking probes, the initial approach will be using a heat shield, which will then be released. It will also obviously involve a parachute. And so all of these initial steps will be very, very similar to some of the previous missions. But this is when things become different. And here I'm going to cheat a little and use the animation made by NASA of the inside probe because the mission profile is very similar. Once the probe is ready to land, it's essentially going to release the lander directly without using any kind of a sky crane or anything and will then use its own propellant and its own engines using most likely hydrazine to essentially slow down as much as possible and use a tripod configuration as you see right here to basically gently land on the surface of the planet. Kind of similar to what you see right here, except that even though it does resemble this particular InSight probe, the probe itself, the Chinese Tianwen-1, does look slightly different. With this right here being the best representation of this particular probe. But unlike the InSight probe, it also obviously has a rover here. And the prototype of this rover was originally displayed at the International Astronautical Congress, which was in Germany back in 2018, and this is sort of what it looked like. And so it's obviously a lot smaller in size, significantly smaller as a matter of fact, than any of the NASA rovers which are basically the size of a small car. And because it's so much smaller, all of this weighs a lot less, which is exactly why the Chinese scientists are able to use this mission profile. This right here only works with some of the smaller missions when the payload is not actually that heavy. With heavier payloads, this no longer works, which is why NASA had to improvise and for their Pathfinder mission had to initially use airbags, later on discovering that a sky crane technology was even more efficient at landing heavy objects. So the sky crane used by NASA is really the only way we think we can do this right now with some of these heavier missions. Obviously by landing an even bigger rocket we might be able to land heavier payloads, but we don't really have any Martian rockets yet. So this right here is sort of the peak of landing heavy objects on Mars. Also the other main difference between this mission and some of the previous NASA missions is in what was being launched from planet Earth. The mission itself consists of four different things. There is the orbiter, that's this part right here with the solar panels. The lander itself, that's inside this capsule with a heat shield. The rover, that's inside the heat shield. And interestingly, which is not shown in this image, also a deployable camera. A camera that was meant to be released while the mission was moving toward Mars, and then snap a few shots of the orbiter as it essentially approached Mars. Or in other words, it was literally trying to produce a selfie. And it was able to do so in this picture right here, although I guess the quality and the resolution is not really that good. But it's China's first attempt, so I guess we can kind of forgive them. 
Also, even though the rover itself is relatively small in comparison to other NASA missions, this probe right here is one of the heaviest objects ever launched to Mars. This weighs almost 5 tons and contains a lot of things on the inside, including 13 different scientific instruments. Because remember, unlike NASA's Perseverance mission, this is both the orbiter and the rover. But unfortunately, unlike NASA's missions, the profile here is only set for about 90 days maximum. Or in other words, the rover itself will only be able to operate for about 90 days successfully, and after this, the scientists don't really know what's going to happen to it. Although we're talking about Martian days, so technically it's like 93 or something Earth days. Here's actually another video that was released by the Chinese agency not so long ago, showing us the video of the probe entering the orbit of Mars. Now this is a time-lapse video, meaning that it's obviously uh, accelerated, but it still kind of looks pretty cool. And so we know that the mission itself is definitely doing well so far, but there are still a lot of questions. Such as, for example, where exactly is it going to be landing? And based on some really circumstantial evidence, including some of the tweets that were deleted later, actually it wasn't tweets, it was from the Chinese platform, the current assumption is going to be somewhere right here, not so far away from the landing of the Viking 2 probe. In the Martian area known as Utopia Planitia, that sort of looks like this. This is a picture from the Viking 2 back in 1979. But none of this is certain yet, and things might change as the mission progresses. Mostly because at this point, China is going to choose the safest possible location because they're absolutely terrified of failing this mission. At least that's what I've been hearing from other sources from China. And there are two possible locations chosen inside this site known as Utopia Planitia, depending of course on how the mission progresses. But the mission itself, and also what's happening in China in the last few years, is actually sort of exciting and sort of worth following. First of all, the entire mission from the initial stages of planning up to basically the launch and now being in orbit of Mars took only six years. And although a lot of it was based on the experience and the failure of the Russian slash Chinese Phobos grant mission from I think back in 2011, I think that's when the mission failed, with the Chinese satellite being right here actually, for the most part, the entire mission was actually planned by the Chinese scientists almost entirely independently from anyone else. On top of this, China is definitely trying to create a lot of excitement in the country about Mars and potential future Martian missions. And this can be directly seen in the opening of this really interesting place known as the Mars Camp, located in a desert in China, specifically in the region right here known as Qinghai. And that place sounds absolutely awesome. It's sort of like a theme park where you get to explore what it might feel like living on Mars. You can learn more about this by reading the blog post I'm posting in the description below. But in a nutshell, it's sort of meant to create excitement and of course, create an opportunity to educate of basically Mars and what it might be like to live on Mars. And so once the travel around the world resumes, this is probably going to be one of the first places I want to visit. Because interestingly, some of the recent pictures make this place look absolutely ridiculously cool. Like this is basically something out of Star Wars. I mean, just look at how awesome this looks. But you can learn more about this through the link in the description. Although not before I show you this, this is just absolutely mind-blowing. Also, this is pretty cool too. Anyway, so this place exists and it seems and sounds really, really awesome. But that's sort of to give you an idea of where China is headed. They're definitely set on Mars and potentially landing on Mars, establishing a colony on Mars, and maybe even becoming a leader of exploration in terms of Mars. We know that NASA is still kind of struggling to come up with the funding and obviously is struggling to even maintain its annual funding. And so in that sense, it's probably going to be the new space race. And that is actually a good thing. We know that the last space race led to the exploration and the landing on the moon. And so if all goes well and the competition becomes intense, we might actually see people landing on Mars and maybe even establishing a colony here in our lifetimes. And so that's right, I'm actually encouraging the competition between NASA and Chinese Space Agency. But for China, this mission is important for other reasons as well. First of all, it's going to be marking its 50th anniversary of the initial space launch of this satellite right here known as Dong Feng Hong one that was initially launched back in 1970. And this is a huge launch for China and actually has a, an extremely interesting story behind it that I'm going to be telling you in another video. So make sure to subscribe not to miss this story. The story does involve a very interesting American scientist 
and also actually a founding member of the JPL or the Jet Propulsion Laboratory that initially helped make this happen. And he's also one of the most famous people in China, but is practically unknown in the US. Anyway, that's a story for another day. The story for today is that this is a huge, huge thing for China. It's something that they all take extremely seriously. And despite this just being the first mission for China, it's already really complex. It has a lot of goals, it also has a lot of scientific instruments, including a ground radar, a powerful soil analyzer that's somewhere underneath this, and even the part that's going to be storing soil samples for the retrieval by missions that are going to be landing here in 2030. So in that sense, it's actually kind of similar to Perseverance rover, but just in a much smaller scale. It also has several parts from other countries as well, like there is an Austrian magnetometer in there, and a few other parts that were developed in collaboration with other countries. And the goal here is, of course, to, well, basically look for signs of life on Mars. A lot of the parts were made specifically designed for this. But naturally, all of this will depend on the success of the landing, and that's the hardest part. And we're not really going to know what's going to happen to this until possibly a few more months. And if you're watching this from the future, well, you probably already know what happens. Either way, it's a super exciting mission and something that I personally am definitely looking forward to and something that I'm going to be making a lot of videos about. But before I finish this video, I also wanted to mention a little bit more about the name of the mission, Tianwen Wan. And this was a poem originally written by this guy right here, known as Chu Yuan. He lived over 2000 years ago, but he's a prominent Chinese author and he's also extremely well known for his poetry and for also asking a lot of really interesting philosophical questions. One of those questions was in regards to heavens. Tianwen is the name of one of these poems, and in that poem he questions and in some way also doubts the traditional concepts of heavens in China. In other words, it's sort of a symbolic representation of the poem itself, to question the reality and to try to find out what's going on out there in the night skies. And so, super exciting mission and something to look forward to in some of the future videos. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description, which now also features a lot of really cool Martian imagery. Also, if you love science fiction, check out the book on Mars, the link to which is also in the description. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.